for decades, rats have been a constant problem in Singapore. They lurk around our eateries, our malls, our housing estates, and are becoming increasingly difficult to catch. They've been found inside raw chickens, inside our rice bag, and scampering our local restaurants. Their recent online appearances have turned them into social media stars. So I'm here at Tuopayo Lorong 8 where the infamous rat was found scurrying around this restaurant. I want to go and see if we can have a chat with them. Hello! The staff was unable to provide us a response and said we should call the boss. Our team reached out to him, but he didn't want to be interviewed. Essentially, he said it's been a few weeks since the incident occurred and he rather not remind people about what happened. So since the issue has died down, he's decided not to talk about it anymore to anyone, including us. Rats. They seem to be showing no signs of going away, despite repeated efforts to curb the rat problem. Are they getting out of control? Are we losing the battle against rats? Hi, hey. hi. Jamson Chia, who lives in Loyang, certainly feels so. For the past 15 years, he has been sharing his residences with unwanted guests. Jamson knew he had a rat problem. Chew and bite marks were on everything that he left outside his house, from his furniture to his plants. So is this area? Yeah. So you could see a little burrow here. Oh, wow, yeah. The burrows are still here. Yeah. There's one here and there's one over there. These are the actual rat burrows. Yeah, according to the, the pest, pest company, company, right? Company. But, but how did you know they were rats? So essentially, we just heard things being knocked over in the middle of the night. Yeah. And after two or three days in a row, we thought something's not right. And uh, our bamboo, bamboo poles were being chewed upon. Wow, yeah. this is quite hard. Yeah, so for them yeah. to chew through means... Yeah. They've got big scary teeth. Yeah, yeah. They, they chew <laughs> essentially quite a fair bit off. So oh. my pole just got shorter and shorter. So did you actually see any of these rats? Yeah. How big were they? They were about this big. Oh, okay. Wow. They were quite ferocious actually. They could essentially just stand there, look at you and then before they start running away. So they're not scared of you yeah. either? Yeah. So you mentioned that this is actually the second time? Oh yes, last happened in 2005. We essentially just set traps and, ah. and that's it, you know. Those traditional wired mesh kind of trap. The pest company set up over five traps around the house. But it was a slow kill. It took six months for Jamson to rid his house of rodents. But the happiness was short-lived. In 2018, the rats came back. This time, when you guys got the pest company, did they do the same thing? This time around, it was a lot more advanced, where they actually have uh, those little black little machines that simulate like an actual borrow for the rest. Wow. Chew on the food and ta-da! Oh. They found them there. This time around, the pest company used a process called slow baiting. This is when poison bait is placed in a bait station near a suspected rat harbour. Once the rat eats the poison bait, it is replaced. This cycle continues until the bait remains untouched, which is a clear indication that the rat has been killed. The second time around, it took three weeks to rid Jamson's home of rats. Three weeks might sound like a short time, but a rodent's life moves very fast. In that time, a female can mate and be ready to deliver a litter of up to 14 pups. And with a gestation period of only 21 days, one rat and its offspring can multiply to a family of 15,000 in just one year. With rats multiplying so quickly, are we getting rid of them quick enough? Five years ago, Singapore's National Environment Agency launched a war against rats. They may grow up to 40 centimetres in size and they also reproduce very quickly. Some food stall operators we spoke to said that the problem has escalated in the past month. An island-wide rat surveillance program detected some 43,000 rat burrows in public areas. 
The cullings culminated in an extermination of over 300 rodents in Bukit Batok alone. Since then, the NEA has said it's winning the war on rats. But four years later, Singapore rats seem to be making a comeback with a new wave of ratty viral videos. Does it mean we're on the brink of another outbreak? Rat sightings have been on the rise in Singapore and it spawned a new wave of viral videos. So, are we on the brink of another rodent outbreak? There are over 100 pest control companies in Singapore exterminating rats on a daily basis. I'm calling some of them. So, hi there. I hear you guys are a pest control company. I'd like to find out how often you get calls about rats. Rats, rats, these rat situations, rat problems. How often you get calls about this? And are these calls are these you're getting, have they increased over compared the year? to a year ago? Let's say one year ago? I mean, how, how serious are these rats? Three to ten times a week. Yes, there's been a slight increase in the last five years. And is that a uh, big uh, increase? Don't know. Five Cost calls has maybe? Been the same every year. Then every week? Yes, there has been a slight increase. How often do you have to deal with rat problems? For rodent issues, we have about seven to ten calls a week. Of the ten I've called, three of them say there has been no increase. But seven say there has been an increase in the number of calls over the past few years requesting for rat extermination. Hey, Nelson. Hey. Hi, Hello, Steve. Hi. Okay. Nelson's company was one of the firms I called. He started Four Solutions Pest Management two years ago. And within that time, his team of rat hunters have trapped and terminated over 500 rats. Okay, what you can see is a lot of waste disposal. Yeah, look okay, at And food wastage over here also. So those are the areas that they actually like. Are they drawn to the food? Yes, definitely. I want to find out how difficult it is to find these rodents. I've arranged to follow him on one of his rat hunting expeditions. Today, he's bringing me to Changi. This is one of the locations where rats were last seen active. So over here, as you can see, this is the back of the shop house. <laughs> yes. So this is the wooden door. They actually build it off and then actually they can go in to actually hunt for food. They can oh. even buy through bricks. Bricks? Yes, bit through bricks. Solid brick like this? Yes. Oh, that is very scary. So I'm going to show you a barrel that I just found here. Okay, basically the features you can take note is it's actually in a fan shape and they like to actually barrel through near a concrete area. Doesn't the concrete block them? Uh, basically below the concrete is always the drainage area. Yeah. They actually is linked to the sewage. So it's easier for travel because it's linked to their colony and it can be a maze inside. So in other words, this guy might be here, but is linked to his cousin over here. Yes. And maybe linked to his uncle over there. Yeah, correct. And another, another friend over there. Yes. So it's underground, we it's... basically could have rats across the entire Singapore underneath. <laughs> yes, definitely. So this one also? Yes, this is another sighting of barrels. Oh, wow. This one looks like a huge hole. So you can see there are multiple barrels around this area. Yeah. So a rule of thumb to estimate the size of the population. Basically, you just multiply the number of barrows that you detected by the factor of 1.5. Okay, so we find 10 barrows in this area. If you find 10 barrows in this area itself, so you are looking at around 15 rodents. Singapore is a city of skyscrapers. We rarely know what goes on underground. But living beneath our feet, are nearly 30,000 rats. Rats live in what is called burrows. That could be as deep as half a metre and are part of a complex system of underground tunnels. There is an average of 19,000 burrows across Singapore. And here rats hold their food, they reproduce, they take care of their young. Each burrow can house up to 30 rats. And rats usually travel within a 50 metre radius from their home. So if you see a rat in your neighbourhood, you probably aren't standing too far from a rat burrow. Ng Li Ching is an expert in environmental health. 
when she joined NEA in 2006, there was very little known about the rats in our midst. How do they survive? What diseases do they spread? So she started a research program to study them. I've arranged to meet her and I want to find out if we are indeed seeing more rats today than in the past. I get the impression there seem to be more rats in our country today. So in the last two years, uh, our reports and our survey, we show that we have, a, in fact, a reduction in rat burrows. Uh -huh. Burrows are just homes for rats. Okay. So we use that as a proxy to estimate the trending of uh, rat population. So we have seen a reduction of about 50% of uh, rat burrow in Singapore in the last wow, two years. Wow, 50%. They seem to feel like there are more though. So Why? probably, do you see physically or do you... I have, do I have you, demons scurrying by. They have adapted, they, uh, they, they use infrastructure that we've built yeah. for them ourselves, they have used them. For example, behind board wall, or the artificial uh, boards and floor ceiling, and even um, in bin chutes. Okay. So where gully trap covers are compromised, yeah. and that's where they have access to food waste in a, in a bin chute. The main driver is still food. So in a city, there's ample opportunity to access food. In fact, studies have shown the distribution of rats are very influenced by uh, availability of food. So they've become smarter and figured out how to survive in our environment. Yes, they are very smart. Oh boy. The thing is, I'm seeing the rats in the daytime as well. Mm. So, yes. I thought they only come out at night. No, in our study, we found they can be very active in the day as well because there's a lot of food in the, in the day. Have they become emboldened because we don't care about them? Or people just see them and go, oh yeah, it's just a rat? Well, I think they know their path, they know their escape routes and all that, and they're confident. And that's why they um, come out even in a day. Okay, so yeah. how big a concern is this? How scared should I be? I mean, what well, can these rats do? I think we, we should be concerned because rats carry diseases like yeah. leptospirosis and murine typhus through their urine or through flea bites. Fleas that jump from the rats to the human. So I, I don't actually know what are those diseases you mentioned, but yeah. are they scary enough? Are they can they kill? Uh, they are treatable. They can be treated with antibiotics, but then they are still a disease and we don't want them. The NEA states that there are 50% less burrows today than three years ago. So that's definitely a good sign. But does it also mean that the rats left behind have become even more of a nuisance? Rats have adapted to urban living. They can fit through holes of one centimetre in diameter. That's plenty of pipes, gaps and cracks that provide escape routes. Hard to reach and even harder to outward. How can we get rid of these unwanted city dwellers for good? Rats have been a menace to Singapore for centuries. William Farquhar, the first governor of Singapore, used to pay one shilling, which is the equivalent of about five Singapore dollars today, for every rat killed. That was to prevent a cholera outbreak. But as the population grew, so too the number of rats. And apart from just being breeding machines, they are highly adaptable, suspicious of anything new which makes pest control difficult. And they cooperate with one another, warning each other of danger. Meet Jason. He's been in the business of pest control for 12 years. With his decade of experience, Jason's one of our best bets for our battle against rats. Today, he's showing me the latest tools to detect rat burrows. We're at Red Hill. It looks pristine but I soon realised the ratty action is lurking beneath the surface. This is a typical HDB neighbourhood, you know, and it looks quite clean. I wouldn't imagine there'll be rats here. Mm. It really looks clean, but rats actually uh, do exploit uh, our infrastructure to okay. so actually hide. They actually do make use of sanitary lines uh, behind wooden boards uh, in the fourth ceiling. So when you're inspecting in these areas, what exactly are you looking out for? Uh, we do look out for uh, signs of rat activity such as burrows, uh -huh. uh, rat droppings, uh, uh -huh. rat marks, uh, okay. gnaw marks. And uh, look, we can see there are some uh, rat droppings here. Oh, all this? Yes, yes. From the shape of the droppings, we can tell that there's a uh, sewer rat. 
from this, I can deduce that the rats possibly they might be hovering behind uh, the cupboard here. In this? Yes, yes. This is the borescope. With technology advancements, it now allows Jason to peer deep into burrow holes with clarity. Jason uses it to peer into small, tight crevices such as cracks in buildings and in drains. So no rats can escape his detection. This is my colleague, uh, Ray. He's about to insert the borescope uh, into the gully trap to look for rat activities. So you can see the borescope is going in and we can see that there are some uh, food waste. This oh, is the, the orange stuff. Oh. The pipe here is actually broken and uh, the soil has actually come out. So normally, your camera should be able to go all the way through. Yes. So uh, once this is damaged and water is not free-flowing, yeah. so all the food can actually accumulate at a point. It's perfect for them. It's like someone's collecting all the food for them. It's they a just perfect come, they environment. Feed, go behind, have a nap, come back, eat again. Precisely, <laughs> yeah. I was surprised to find that there were rats in the area. And I think it's got to do with maintenance and little nooks and crannies, like the bin chute. Both that we visited were damaged and clogged within a span of two metres. And those places could become possible breeding grounds for rats. We didn't exactly catch the rodents, but we did find what could be evidence of their existence, their poo. And these rat droppings are also a useful lead for successful rat decontamination. Cliff Chua is one of Singapore's leading rat researchers. And like Jason, is also helping to combat our rat problems. And he spends a lot of his time doing this. Studying various rat droppings. So judging from the appearance in the microscope, it belongs to the Rattus norvegicus, which is also known as the Norway rat. It's also commonly known as the sewer rat. You can tell all that just from looking at that, that poo. Yep. In terms of the Norway rat, the shape, they are actually more of a rectangular shape with blunt ends. Now that you know the kind of poop that different rats give, how does it help you? There's the main two species, the Norway rats and the red roof rats, they have different behaviours. By knowing the behaviour, we can, we can actually choose to decide what kind of bait to use for these rats. Mm. So for Norway rats, they actually prefer a higher protein diet, whereas for the roof rats, they prefer more grain-based materials like um, rice, so we can actually incorporate more of a higher carbohydrate kind of bait. I see. By knowing their behaviour, we can actually also decide on which kind of traps to use. Mm -hmm. We have cage traps, we have blue bots, we have uh, the poison baits. So usually for the Norway rats, we'll carry out the baiting with poison baits because it's in the outdoors, yeah. where we'll put it into the burrows. So um, for the roof rats, on the other hand, we usually use glue bots or cage traps. Then we'll set it into false ceilings. It is to cater for the the strategy to control the population of the rat. Okay. But in the constant battle against rat infestations, we're constantly looking for a smarter, quicker and more effective way to battle rats. I'm with Tong Kian Singh, who has been in the pest control business for the last decade. Together with his team at ASTAR, Tong created a smart solution for controlling Singapore's rat problem, the rodent eye. You said this is called rodent eye. Yes, rodent what, eye. What is that? It's the name that we've given to uh, our system. Uh, basically, uh, a sensor that are able to detect both uh, heat and movement. Ah. So, when the rats run across, it will detect and it send information to the back end via the cloud. These devices are equipped with infrared sensors. When a rat moves through its field of view, a signal is sent out, informing you of rat activity. All this information is stored in a cloud service, conveniently accessible through an app on your phone. So, you know exactly where that rodent is. What does this data tell us? Okay, this is a shopping mall. Okay, you can uh, immediately know uh, where are the uh, rodents' activities. The red one, you can see here, uh, there were activities over the last 24 hours. Okay. And the green one means there's no activity uh, last night. So in other words, like, like the one that says 20, for example, yes, you have yes. a sensor there and it there's trigger, been a lot of activity. Yes, correct, correct. So the next step is to put a trap. Yes, and we mount the sensor into the traps as well. So that will help us uh, to retrieve the rat. And is this more effective than the traditional way of... Oh, definitely. 
with conventional way you are playing the guessing games. Nowadays we're dealing with smart rats. So sometimes we put in the traps, um, it does not catch any. Okay. But the sensor will tell us that the activities continue. Then we learn actually the rats is there, but just that they are avoiding the traps. Oh. So we are able to sort of make changes in terms of putting in a better Leo and uh, different traps. One incident that we saw, the roof rat go into the ground mm -hmm. uh, under a platform to look for food, which is um, not common. Okay. So that, that is a kind of a change uh, that adapt to, uh, to the environment as well. To show us how the rodent eye system works, Tong has set up an overnight trap in an area that indicates a high level of rat activity. Twelve hours later... There you go. Oh! Ooh. Yeah! It's still alive. Ah. Yes! The, the sensor is here. The moment it enters, get caught, it detects here. And they send a message to our uh, yeah. handphone. This is the message we receive telling us the rodent uh, call at this location and the sensor number. Because of this, you know exactly which trap yes. in which location yes. it was. Yes, no time wasted, yeah. Using the rodent eye, Tong managed to catch 23 rodents in a central kitchen in just three days. So I've learned that we cannot underestimate the enemy because this enemy is smart, brave and very adaptable. We need to harness science and technology in this ongoing war against rats. Only then do we stand some chance of winning the rat race. But for now, it begins with you and I by not leaving food lying around.